Hey everybody, I didn't know it's been a while. I'm focusing on my side business, my travel agency, and all this other stuff, as well as writing. I feel like I've been neglecting my writing skills and my writing style for quite a while and thought that you know I should focus on that. So I'm in the middle of working on a piece about the Second Amendment and what I think people are missing about the Second Amendment and the way it's worded. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't necessarily understand or don't want to admit that they understand. But with that, I've been listening to a lot of uh, trigonometry lately. That's trigonometry, a YouTube channel where they focus on just having a conversation, an honest conversation between you know the host and their guest. And the guest can be from the right, could be from the left, could be from anywhere on the spectrum. But the point that I that I think has driven me to this video is quite literally their, their um, conversation with Africa Brooks and a um, couple of their conversations with Zuby and others where they talk about being silenced by the mob or the crowd, but not the literal mob or crowd the mob crowd up here. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what I always think of it, it's the exact thing that you just outlined. I think of it as cancellation by proximity. That's that's the sort of world that we're in right now. And I also receive messages from people saying, Africa, I would love to share your Instagram live or your podcast episode or your post. But I know that if I do, I'm going to be, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get it from the mob online. And if you ask yourself, I mean, go, go onto my social media. What the hell am I even saying? I'm advocating for, hello, people. Can we remember that there's a fucking middle ground? Mm. It, that, that's it. Mm. That's yeah. it. Right? Yeah. Just advocating for nuanced conversations. Mm. Can we understand the context before we buy into a three minute clip, those are the conversations that I'm having that we don't have to pick between pro or anti, white or black, with us or against us. So many of us, and I would argue that the majority are in that middle ground, mm -hmm. we're in the gray area. Um, but it feels like to even say that puts you in a certain position. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's fucking crazy. And that is the nature of self-censorship when it comes to the point of it doesn't even take an external mob to tell you that you can't say that it's the mob in your mind. And that is the most dangerous thing where you start to filter every single thought, every single action, every single idea through what the mob will accept. That's frightening. And what it comes from is that we are afraid to talk our ideas. We're afraid to mention our thoughts on a topic because it might not be the politically correct. It might not be the most culturally sensitive. It might not be the progressive line. And what we end up doing is succumbing to that mob in our head that tells us, oh, maybe I shouldn't because maybe there is a point where we... There is a point where we don't say it because we're afraid that we are, could lose our job, that we could lose our financial backing from, you know, whether it be an employer, uh, if you own your own business, clients not coming to you as much. And when they were talking with Zuby, I forget if it was his second or his third interview that they were doing it with. I think it was the second interview from a year or two ago. It was basically... They were talking about a, a stalker at a store got fired for sharing a comedy sketch from Billy Con Billy Connolly, and Zuby's like, "That sucks, but just remember that's short term. Long term, you know, because having something like that happen to you, especially if it becomes publicly known that you're fired because 
you know, the company didn't like what you said, even though you did it on your own time, on your own personal platform, etc. We need to understand that in societies where we have the right to freedom of speech, we are allowed to speak our opinions. We are allowed to speak our minds. That doesn't mean we are free from consequences, but consequences aren't always a bad thing. There are positive consequences. If you eat right, exercise, and put forth effort, you can lose weight. You can, if you study hard, do your homework, pass your tests, come up with a thesis statement, et cetera, you can go on and earn your PhD and become a you know, well-known figure in your field of study. Those are all positive consequences of doing something. There are negative consequences, and I think that's communication-wise where we get the disconnect. We don't want to have consequences. We don't want negative consequences specifically. And so I'm going to take it to my own personal postings. I don't talk much about or who I work for other than I'm working for myself in a travel agency that I'm starting up. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. But at the same time, I should be able to go out there and say that, you know what, I agree with a lot of the stuff they're talking about on trigonometry. I agree with a lot of people that aren't woke or politically correct or whatever you want to say. It doesn't mean I agree with everything that say, they say. It doesn't mean that I have a completely right-wing view. It doesn't mean that I have an alt-right view or etc. It just means that on some topics, I agree with them. On other topics, I may vehemently oppose them. That doesn't mean that I'm in the wrong. You know, take, for example, my Second Amendment. My Second Amendment article that I'm writing or blog post that I'm writing. It's not that I'm wrong for supporting the Second Amendment. It's not wrong for me to be pro-Second Amendment. But it is wrong for me not to talk about it. It's not. It's wrong for me not to voice my opinion when I have the right to do so. That is what this platform is about. And I'm not just talking about YouTube, BitChute, my own website, wherever I can post this video that allows for free speech. And that's the thing. We're allowing social media to become the public space here in the United States. We need to start treating it as that. I have the right to go out onto the street right now on the public street and voice that I am a pro second amendment. Here's why. And read off my blog post. And there's nothing the public can do about it. There's nothing the police can do about it. There's nothing the city can do about it because I have the right to do that. Now, should I be cognizant of what other people, what it does to businesses and things like that? Should I maybe go to the city and be like, hey, I would like to give a public address about this and I would like to do it at a city funded state park or city funded park? Yes, I should follow the policies for that. But I do have the right to go onto the sidewalk, walk down the street and talk about this ad nauseum. So, and that's where I think here in the US, we, we've kind of lost it and we're allowing mental mental mobs that aren't there rule us you know what if i lose my job what if I, you can get another job yes it might be difficult it might put you in a, an awkward position financially but you know what so so be it not every employer is for you and not and you're not for every employer and why should one side be able to tell us what is right and wrong? You know, take, for example, the most recent, <laughs> most recent Supreme Court cases that have been decided this last week. The big one being Roe v. Wade being overturned. If you actually read the dissenting opinion that was leaked, and I haven't read the new one, I'm going to assume it's the same for right now, but I will read it. 
um, assuming that it's pretty much the same as before. If you go through and look the way that they argued Roe v. Wade, it should not have been decided the way it was. That's not to say that I think women don't have the right to an abortion. I think they do. But there are ways to go about it legally in this country rather than having um, judicial legislation passed. And that's it. You know, it's that's what Roe v. Wade was, was judicial legislation. Hell, even Marbury, Marbury versus Madison was technically judicial legislation. We didn't have enshrined in the Constitution judicial review. If somebody were to argue that against the Supreme Court now, they might change their opinion. And that would undo a whole lot of other cases. You know, that's, that's the life we live in where, you know, we have to be able to go back and review previous decisions. The Supreme Court's decisions cannot always be final if new information comes along or if challenges come to it, because maybe there is something that the previous Supreme Court missed, or maybe something they overlooked, or maybe something that they um, they purposely omitted from the record from you know the hearing. We don't know everything that we don't know that everything is on the up and up. Just like we don't know, just like we you know, for example, we have lobbyists talking to members of Congress. Do we know what every single conversation a lobbyist has with a member of Congress, both House and Senate? No. How do we know that those dealings are on the up and up? We don't. You know, we talk about presidents being, you know, crooked and evil. Just look at Nixon, you know. But again, it all comes down to being able to communicate and being able to voice our opinions and have conversations. You might change my mind on something. You might not. Maybe I change your mind on something. I might not. And we can agree to disagree. Are there problematic ideas out there? Sure, racism. But is racism in everything? No. You know, I was listening to, uh, again, Trigonomics, and they, they were talking with Zubin. He was talking about how when the issue with George Floyd happened, he saw the video, you know, fairly quickly, and it's like, that's police brutality. That's bullshit. It should never have happened. And he was right that a majority of the people who watched that video realized this is bullshit. Cops, you know, supporters of police, etc. You know, that's that's the thing. We we don't allow for us to communicate. We don't allow for our our opinions to be heard or not even validated, just heard. You know, you can't learn if you don't talk. And you can't talk and voice those opinions and help learn and help teach other people. You may be onto something. You may have this bright idea, but if you're afraid to talk about it because it's not correct, then how are we supposed to learn as a society? How are we supposed to grow as a society? How are we supposed to change people's minds if we don't know what they're thinking? If we just use blanket terms. How do we know what somebody actually is thinking or what their thoughts on particular topics are? You know, I'm pro second amendment. That doesn't mean I'm against certain gun control measures. I'm, you know, how, I mean, how many things can I take it, take up as a, an issue and study it and be, you know, in some cases conservative, in some cases liberal, all of them, as much as I'm willing to learn about them. But the problem is, if I can't learn about them from people and learn about them from various texts, then how am I supposed to learn about it at all? Am I supposed to take one side at face value? Am I supposed to trust what the media tells me? Am I supposed to trust trigonometry, what they tell me? No. I can I can see what they're saying as valid, but I still need to go and verify what they're saying is true. And to be honest, we do for the most part 
allow ourselves to be silenced by the mob. And again, it's not the mob on Twitter. It's not the mob in town. It's the mob in our head. It is our perceived fear of being silenced, of being told that we are no longer allowed to be a member of society. Why? Why do we allow that to happen to ourselves? What's, how do I want to do this? How do I want to put this? Trigonometry asks one question of every guest at the end. What is one topic that we are not talking about right now as a, as a society? I think that's a valid question. I'm not going to answer it here because, one, I don't have an answer for it right now. But, two, what do you want to talk about that we are not talking about now that maybe we should be talking about but you're afraid to? In all seriousness, why are you holding back from starting your own YouTube channel? Why are you holding back from starting your own website? Why are you holding back from trying? Is it because there is a mob in your head? Is it because you are trying to protect yourself, protect your family from something? Yes, there are evil people on the internet. There are evil people that just don't understand right from wrong in the sense of you don't dox people, you don't do this, that, or the other thing. But with that said, if you don't let them, if you don't let them control the narrative, if you don't let them hold you hostage mentally, then they have no hold over you. They have no way of keeping you in check. You know, you may not agree with everything that I say, and I hope you don't. You may not agree with everything that Red's rhetoric says, and I hope you don't. You may not agree with everything that Joe Biden says, and I hope you don't. You may not agree with everything Zuby says, and I hope you don't. Again, I don't want a conformist state. I don't want us to have an ideology where there is such a thing as political correctness. To where there's something that's taboo that we can't talk about. We should be able to talk about. We should be able to go and say, hey, let's talk about, well, hell, I'll even say it and I'll get, this video will never get seen by anybody, but let's talk about Nazi ideology. What is it that attracts people to it? What is it that makes people hate it? Why is it that you feel you're that way about that topic? Yes, it's going to get hidden. It's going to get plummeted. It'll get a nice warning on there. Talks about this, and this is bad. But at the same time, if we can't talk about it, if we can't try to talk people out of bad ideologies, then how are we supposed to grow as a, as a race, as a species, as, you know, the dominant mammal on this planet in the sense that we have the ability to destroy it several times over because we have horrible weapons that I used to be on a submarine that could potentially have launched those. That's, that's the point I'm trying to get at. How do we change if we're not allowed to communicate? How do we change if you and I can't have a conversation? Really, what is it? Why can't we talk about things? Why are things not allowed? I'll leave it with that. Peace.